Welcome to St. Luke's where spirits come alive. We are so happy that you are worshiping with us today. We are so grateful for the gifts of those who enable us to worship by video. Their names appear on the screen and we praise God for our whole community gathered in spirit. We are in the season of Lent, the six Sundays leading up to Easter. It is normally a time of self-examination, sacrifice, and giving up of self. But we have already had a year of this experience, and so we will shift our focus in Lent this year. The word Lent comes from the old English word for lengthen, referring to the lengthening of days as we approach spring. So Lent is often referred to as the springtime of the soul, when we are invited into nourishment and new growth in Christ. So our Lenten theme is filled and overflowing. I invite you to focus on what fills you up spiritually with faith, hope, trust in God's providence and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. What fills you with positive thoughts, good feelings, and a strong body? We will share about this in our children's messages throughout Lent as well. We begin our Lenten worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all of our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Let us confess our sin and our need for grace and mercy. Most merciful God, we have fallen short time and time again. You have given us your word, both in scripture and in son. You have promised us your presence, both in spirit and in community. You have graced us with your kingdom, both in teaching and in service. Even so, we neglect, ignore, and reject your purposes for us. We do not love what you love. We do not embrace what you embrace. We do not defend what you call us to defend. Have mercy on us, O God of all ages, past, and all hope for years to come. Forgive us for what we do and what we fail to do. With your gifts, promises, and grace, continue working in our lives that we might receive full life in Jesus Christ, now and forevermore. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you, guide you continually, so that in Christ, your faith will deepen, and you shall be sustained like a spring in the desert. Thanks be to God. Amen. Dear Lord, 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray together. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood, you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation, you protected your Son from sin. Renew in us the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us and minister to us, that we might be strengthened in faith and renewed for service in your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 1 Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. For our children's message today and throughout Lent, we are going to talk about filling our bucket. And it's based on a book called Have You Filled? your bucket today, or have you filled a bucket today? And it's about having our bucket filled and filling other people's bucket. And it fits our Lenten theme, which is filled and overflowing. We're focusing on being filled up by God so that we can fill up other people uh, with love and generosity. And so all of the families with uh, children in the um, congregation have received a copy of this book. And there's an older one for our middle and high schoolers. And the high schoolers are going to talk about this before they get the book. So we're going to talk about this in our next uh, meeting. But to start us out, I'm going to read this book. And it's Have You Filled a Bucket Today? So we're going to get started and then I'll talk a little bit more about it. All day long, everyone in the whole wide world walks around carrying an invisible bucket. You can't see it, but it's there. You have a bucket. Each member of your family has a bucket. Your grandparents, friends, and neighbors all have buckets. Everyone carries an invisible bucket. Your bucket has one purpose only. Its purpose is to hold your good thoughts and your good feelings about yourself. You feel happy and good when your bucket is full. And you feel sad and lonely when your bucket is empty. Other people feel the same way too. They're happy when their buckets are full, and they're sad when their buckets are empty. It's great to have a full bucket, and this is how it works. Other people can fill your bucket, and you can fill theirs. You can fill your own bucket, too. So how do you fill a bucket? You fill a bucket when you show love to someone. 
when you say or do something kind, or even when you give someone a smile. That's being a bucket filler. A bucket filler is a loving, caring person who says and does nice things to make others feel special. When you treat others with kindness and respect, you fill their bucket. But you can also dip into a bucket and take out some good feelings. You dip into a bucket when you make fun of someone, when you say or do mean things, and even when you ignore someone. That's bucket dipping. Bullying is bucket dipping. When you hurt others, you dip into their bucket. You will dip into your own bucket too. Many people who dip have an empty bucket. They think they can fill their own bucket by dipping into someone else's, but that will never work. You never fill your own bucket when you dip into someone else's. But guess what? When you fill someone else's bucket, you fill your own bucket too. You feel good when you help others feel good. All day long, we are either filling up or dipping into each other's buckets by what we say and do. Try to fill a bucket and see what happens. You love your mom and dad. Why not tell them you love them? You can even tell them why. Your caring wor words will fill their buckets with joy. Watch for smiles to light up their faces. You will feel like smiling too. A smile is a good clue that you have filled a bucket. If you practice, you'll become a great bucket filler. Just remember that everyone carries an invisible bucket and think of what you can say or do to fill it. Here are some ideas for you. You could smile and say hi to the bus driver or the Zoom teacher, I would add. He has a bucket too. You could invite the new kid at school to play with you. You could write a thank you note to your teacher. You could tell your grandpa that you like spending time with him. There are many ways to fill a bucket. Bucket filling is fun and easy to do. It doesn't matter how young or old you are. It doesn't cost any money. It doesn't take much time. And remember, when you fill someone else's bucket, you fill your own bucket too. When you're a bucket filler, you make your home, your school, and your neighborhood better places for all. Bucket filling makes everyone feel good. So why not decide to be a bucket filler today and every day? Just start each day by saying to yourself, I'm going to do something to fill someone's bucket today. And at the end of each day, ask yourself, did I fill a bucket today? Yes, I did. That's the life of a bucket filler. And that's you. So have you filled a bucket today? That's what we're going <clears> to <throat> talk about during Lent. So I have a bucket right here. And the kids of the church have already received a bucket so that they can practice being a bucket filler throughout Lent. And our administrative assistant, Lynn Singletary, has hand delivered these to make sure that they would get them before Lent begins. And one of the things that we are practicing during Lent is to practice our faith and to remember that the reason we are able to fill other people's buckets is because we have Jesus who fills our bucket up first. And that is what enables us to be a bucket filler to begin with. So everybody is receiving in their um, Lenten packets in the mail a palm cross. 
And you can put that in your bucket first as a reminder that in prayer and in Bible study and in all these wonderful ways that we have, the love we receive from God fills us up first and that's what enables us to be a bucket filler. So that's what we're talking about in this season of Lent, that we're being filled to overflowing uh, by God's love and that's what enables us to be a bucket filler for other people. So we're gonna talk more about this in our children's messages and in our youth program um, during Lent. So the last thing that we're gonna do is that we have to take our alleluias, which we love to sing as often as we can. And we don't sing those during Lent. And so we need to put all of our alleluias inside of our bucket where, and it's gonna hold our praise for the season of Lent. So I have all of my alleluias, sevenfold alleluias right here. So I'm gonna put my alleluias in my bucket. So for our our uh, families, if you have a bowl that you wanna put on the center of your table as a symbol of your bucket, and that will be a symbol of all the filled uh, things that God is gonna fill you up with in Lent and how you can fill each other's buckets. You can put a bowl right in the middle of your table or if you're at Michael's, you can find a bucket like this. Um, we're gonna be filled to overflowing with each other, with our children and with all of us, um, being filled to overflowing with Jesus' grace and God's love. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I keep seeing the image of the pile up of crashed cars and semis and twisted metal on I-35 from last week. It has become a fitting image for me of how this whole year has felt, trying to manage something that is beyond us, everything going wrong, life suddenly changing and even disappearing way too much death, being so out of control, so unexpectedly. The image of the tangle of cars on the highway mirrors the twisting of our own souls over the last 12 months, the loss of life, the loss of control, of ease and of peace. This is how we come to Lent. We are exhausted and discouraged. We just want to chuck it all out the window. But we need this Lent. We need the ashes. We need the dust. We need the wilderness. If for no other reason than to tell the truth about how awful we feel, how weary we are, how depleted our bodies are, how broken our hearts feel, and how much we need God. The twisted events of this year have left us wandering in the wilderness, wondering how we can go on. How much longer? How much more difficulty? It is not just the pandemic. 
It is the protests and the experience of some of our citizens that their lives do not matter, are not valued, and can be snuffed out by a knee on the neck, by underfunded schools, by neighborhoods that do not even have internet, much less a life-saving vaccine. It is the deeply divided politics and the feeling that we cannot even listen to someone with a different opinion or perspective, that justice does not matter, and that cancel culture is more important than relationships, than community, than the common good. And if all that were not enough, we are recovering from a natural disaster with bitter cold, loss of power, and more loss of life. And while my home got down into the 40s when we didn't have power, at least I have a home, and many do not. At least I could heat food on a gas stove and warm up when the heat came on a few hours at a time. And thank goodness for Gary Bowers and Nancy Slaughter, where I got a hot shower today and will stay in a warm bed tonight. Yes, it has become a wilderness year that has twisted us up with grief and sadness and depleted us as if we have not taken in sustenance for 40 days in the wilderness. Is this how Jesus felt in his time in the wilderness? So depleted and weary, so exhausted and troubled, so tired of death and ashes and dust, he was ready to chuck it all out the window, or better yet, throw it all back in God's face? We do not know in our story from Mark what the temptations were that Jesus faced in the wilderness, but they were bad enough to twist his soul, to tempt him to give up on God, to believe that nothing good was left. It was bad enough to tempt Jesus to trust evil, to think that wrong was right, to imagine that the devil had won. It was bad enough to prod Jesus into fear that the Holy Spirit who entered into him at his baptism had now abandoned him in the wilderness. All of these lies are so easy to believe when we are in pain. As his soul was being twisted to the breaking point, God intervened and brought Jesus relief. The report of that aid is brief. It is just six short words, but it gives us hope that as we go through our wilderness time, God will come to our aid as well. And the angels waited on him. In scripture, angels usually reside in the heavenly realm. They only come to earth when God sends them with a specific message to share like the angel Gabriel appearing to Mary and Zechariah and the angels at the empty tomb. They communicate their message and then they return to heaven. But as Jesus recovers from his terrible time in the wilderness, it was bad enough that God sends multiple angels, not with a message, but with a ministry. The angels minister to Jesus. They untwist his soul. They nourish him. They fill him with springs of living water. They soothe him with hope and the salve of the Spirit's healing balm. Jesus is not alone. He has never been alone. He will never be alone. The angels surround him and fill him with kindness, with encouragement, nourishment, affirmation, community, healing, hope, and love. Talk about having someone fill your bucket. They fill him with a promise that is written in Isaiah, 
The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden. The ministry of God's angels moves Jesus from a parched wilderness of temptation to a watered garden. That is what Lent is for us this year. Rather than focusing on our own efforts of sacrifice and giving up something and trying a new discipline of prayer and fasting and trying harder, this Lent is a time to pause and to cry out that God might send his angels to minister to us and fill us up. This season, God invites us to depend on his angels that we might be filled up and overflowing, trusting that we are not alone, have never been alone, and will never be alone. We will not be tempted by evil's empty promises that twist the truth and make us believe that we are alone and that death has won. Jesus comes with his angels to surround us and to fill us with kindness, encouragement, with nourishment and affirmation, with community and healing and hope and love. Rather than looking to ourselves to do better, this season of Lent, we will look to the Lord to guide us continually, to satisfy our needs in parched places, to make our bones strong so that we shall be like watered gardens. In, this, in these watered gardens of being strengthened and loved and nourished by God, the springtime of our souls takes root in us. Our faith grows deeper. Our compassion spreads wider. Our service blossoms in new directions. The fragrance of our generosity blesses others. The spiritual practices of Lent flow easily from a rich soil that renews us to follow Jesus out of the wilderness into a life lived for and ministering to others, filling up one another's buckets. Amen. Please join me in our confession of faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We do this in question and answer form similar to our catechism to convey that our faith is not just an intellectual affirmation, but rather a relationship with the triune God, which we seek to deepen during our Lenten practices. Who do you give your heart to? I give my heart to God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Who do you give your heart to? 
I give my heart to Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Who do you give your heart to? I give my heart to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, help us to rely on the nearness of Jesus our Lord. We are weary of pandemic living, of isolation, interactions laced with distance and anxiety. We long for a house full of family and friends, our congregation singing together, a night out, a hug from our grandchild. This wilderness has been harsh and this week bitter cold. As we begin our Lenten journey, we do not know what more we can give up, what else we can sacrifice. But we are clear how much we need you to fill us with your strength, your love, your peace, your life. Nourish and sustain us for this week and all the days to come. Send your angels to minister to us that we might feel like a watered garden in the wilderness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, fill us with gratitude for all that we do have and help our daily offering of thanks guard against negativity and self-preoccupation. Keep us grateful for all the blessings that sustain us day to day, a furnace that works and clean water in our tap, food in our pantry and in our belly, a pet that keeps us company when people cannot, a heart that continues to give and receive love, your bountiful creation that continues to push forth life abundant. Lord, help us remember that gratitude is a free antidepressant that you provided as a factory installed standard feature in all of us. Make us better able to use this gift of gratitude and praise this Lent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing Lord, our hearts are broken at the suffering in the world, the number of people who have died from this virus, the new strains that are taking hold, and we pray for your help and relief. Help us to care for and minister to those at the margins, those who are homeless, poor, disadvantaged, or oppressed in any way. We lift up those who are close to our hearts, who are ill or homebound, and we ask you to draw near to surround them with love and fill them with peace. Bill, Shirley, Bob and Martha, Billy and Eileen, Billy Jr., Carol, Rita, Ed, Annie, B, Bob, Kevin, Linda, Steve, Joe, Nathan, Shirley, Pat, Susan, Gary, Mark, Lorraine, Ava, Doug, and those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Transforming spirit, as we journey with Jesus to the cross, we pray for your power within us to fast from judging others, and instead feast on Christ dwelling in them. Fast from fear of illness, and instead feast on the healing power of God. Fast from anger, and instead feast on patience. Fast from pessimism, and instead feast on hope. Fast from bitterness, and instead feast on for forgiveness. Fast from self-concern, and instead feast on compassion. Fast from suspicion, and instead feast on truth. Fast from gossip, and instead feast on purposeful silence. Fast from anxiety, and instead feast on faith. Fast from problems that overwhelm, 
and instead feast on prayer that sustains. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of the risen Christ be with you always and also with you. You may share the peace of Christ with those in your household or hold the peace of Christ in your heart. We continue with the offering. The Lord guides us continually so we can be like a watered garden. We are filled and overflowing with the grace of Christ so we can join his mission in the world. Thank you for offering your time, talent, and treasure so we can minister to others with God's word. Let us pray together. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, most mighty, O God, most merciful, O God, our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise, call us to your table, grant us your life. When the earth was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath, and the psalmists cried out for healing and full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen, Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen, Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen, Amen. O God, you are breath, send your spirit on this meal. O God, you are bread, feed us with yourself. O God, you are wine, warm our hearts and make us one. O God, you are fire, transform us with hope. O God, most majestic, O God, most motherly, O God, our strength and our song, you show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life filled and overflowing, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may give yourself and those in your household communion with the words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Oh, nobody else could walk. 
Let us pray together. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be a hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer a song of grateful hearts, as we are continually sustained by you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And may God, who claims you as children of light, strengthen you in your faith journey and guide you continually so that you are sustained like a watered garden. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Overflowing with the Holy Spirit, go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted and honor all people as you love, serve, and welcome all. Thanks be to God, and we will. 